Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report, and I'm Antonio. The British tabloid press has long been a formidable force in shaping public opinion and influencing societal norms. From its origins in the 17th century, the British newspaper industry has evolved dramatically, with tabloids emerging as powerful entities that blend sensationalism with news reporting. The relaxation of government censorship in the late 17th century explored a pro pro proliferation of publications, setting the stage for the rise of influential titles like the Times in the 18th century and the Daily Mail at the end of the 19th century. By the early 20th century, the British press was dominated by a few wealthy press barons who wielded significant influence over public discourse. This trend continued with Rupert Murdoch's acquisition of The Sun in 1969, which he transformed into a tabloid powerhouse known for its provocative content, including the infamous page three topless model. Today, the UK media landscape is highly concentrated with three companies, DMG Media, News UK, and Reach controlling 90% of the national newspaper market. The tabloid power extend beyond mere circulation numbers. They have a profound impact on British society and politics. The tabloids have been instrumental in creating a nationwide tabloid culture where sensationalism often trumps serious journalism. This culture has had both positive and negative impacts from democratizing fame to contributing to a toxic public discourse. The influence of tabloids is evident in their ability to set the national agenda and sway public opinion, often aligning with political interests to maintain their power. However, the darker side of tabloid journalism came to light with the phone hacking scandal of the early 2010s. Investigations revealed that journalists at News of the World and other tabloids had illegally accessed voicemails of celebrities, politicians, and even ordinary citizens, including the family of murdered schoolgirl Millie Dowler. This scandal led to the closure of News of the World and the Levison Inquiry, which exposed the unethical practices of the press and recommended the establishment of an independent regulatory body. Despite the revelations, the legal system in the UK has not been conducive to holding tabloids accountable. High profile cases such as those involving Prince Harry, Hugh Grant and other celebrities highlight the challenges faced by individuals seeking justice. The legal battles are often protracted and expensive, making it difficult to, for ordinary people to pursue claims against powerful media conglomerates. Moreover, recent governmental actions, such as the rollback of Section 40 of the Crime and Courts Act, have further weakened protections against press misconduct. The ITV documentary, Tabloids on Trial, aims to shed light on the pervasive influence of tabloids and the devastating impact of their unethical practices. Featuring testimonies from Prince Harry, Hugh Grant, Charlotte Church, and others, the documentary underscores the urgent need for reform in press regulation. It also highlights the human cost of tabloid intrusion, the stories of lives ruined by relentless media scrutiny, such as those of Caroline Flack and Princess Diana, whose tragic death was partly attributed to aggressive paparazzi tactics. 
it's also had an extreme influence on one of the panelists on loose women, Denise Welsh. In comparison to other countries, the UK tabloid culture is uniquely ruthless, often pushing the boundaries of ethical journalism. While other nations have stringent regulations to curb media excesses, the UK press has historically resisted statutory regulations, maintaining a significant degree of autonomy. This resistance has allowed tabloids to operate with relative impunity, influencing every sector of UK life, from politics to public opinion. As the documentary airs, it is hoped that it will reunite the conversation about press regulation and lead to meaningful changes that protect individuals from media abuse while preserving the freedom of the press. The ongoing legal battles and public outcry against tabloid practices underscore the need for a balanced approach that holds the press accountable without stifling journalism freedom. Here is an extended preview of the documentary that will be aired on Thursday. This isn't something that's only about phone hacking. There was microphones in window boxes outside the house. There were trackers, microphones dropped into my car. Uh, there were medical records of me and, and uh, the mothers of my children, for instance. All blagged and stolen out of the NHS. And uh, perhaps most spectacularly, the burglary of both my flat and my office. Speaking to me in an ITV documentary, this is Hugh Grant's first interview since his settlement with the Sun newspaper. He made these claims in his recent legal action, allegations the newspaper has always strongly denied. In the case of my flat burglary, yeah, it was quite spectacular in that the, the, the whole door had been taken off its hinges and nothing was stolen. They'd been there to get uh, information and a lot of information about the interior and the contents of my flat appeared in newspapers a couple of days later. How do you feel today here? He says he reluctantly settled out of court for an enormous sum of money because even if he'd won at trial, he could have faced a £10 million bill. The son settled without any admission of liability. If you're innocent, why do you shove so much money at someone not to go to court? Newsgroup newspapers told us in some disputed cases it's made commercial sense to settle before trial. The scars of unlawful tabloid tactics run deep. From the ages of like, you know, 15 to 21, essentially, I had an inescapable abuser. The press. From the age of 16, Charlotte Church was being hacked by the news of the world. It, there's just a level of paranoia and anxiety. We used to say, oh God, have they, tapped, have they tapped our phones? Are they, have they got microphones in our house? Let's go. So my mother, already an incredibly vulnerable woman, her mental health was really bad. And I'd found her after taking an overdose. She was in a really bad way. And that was straight in the press. Straight in the press, no idea again where it came from. I mean, it was horrific. And she's never been able to, to fully come back from the abuse that she suffered. In 2012, the publisher of the News of the World paid substantial damages and offered its sincere apologies. Them times were like the best times in my life until I started getting hacked and that. 
even national heroes became victims. And I went paranoid. So I went out and bought six phones. So I just kept on changing numbers. You know, and you think, God, when's it going to stop? Yeah, and I got just, I, I come a recluse. Didn't, didn't want to speak to nobody. Paul Gascoigne was unlawfully targeted by some tabloids as he was struggling with addiction and treated in rehab. I was just speaking to my mum and dad, and it, just them. The next day, he'd come out with the papers. So I went mad. I said, what the f*** are you speaking to the papers for? I said, well, I haven't spoken to them. I said, you have. You're the only two I've spoken to. I love me mum and dad. So to think they were, thought they were hackers was good. In 2015, Mirror Group newspapers were ordered to pay damages and apologised. A claim against the News of the World was settled with a full apology in 2012. The Sun settled later without admitting liability. Other allegations reach the very heart of power. There seemed to be no limits to what this group would do. Despite the publisher's strenuous denials, Gordon Brown has accused newsgroup newspapers of unlawful information gathering since he gave evidence under oath at the Leveson inquiry. My bank account was broken into, my building society account was broken into, my gas bill, my electricity bill, my telecommunications bill. I know that they tried to get information from the police computer about me. All these things happened to me during the period I was Chancellor and uh, Prime Minister. This respected statesman now joining others, calling for fresh criminal investigations. I don't, I, I don't hold massive grievances against the foot soldiers or these guys who did this stuff. Not against them, but I, I remain bitter and determined to exact justice on the executives who commissioned this stuff. Despite apologies and more than a billion pounds spent on legal fees and payouts by two of Britain's biggest newspaper groups, for many, the pain endures. Some really emotional interviews there, Rebecca. It still has such a huge impact on people. Yeah, I mean, some people say to me, phone hacking, wasn't that something that was exposed and settled decades ago? But what I've discovered when I've covered court cases, when I've interviewed people and in this documentary is that unlawful invasions into privacy can have really long lasting impacts. And I think that those interviews give a really visceral insight into the psychological and the emotional impacts that they can have even years on. Uh, the famous people that I've spoken to all tell me the same thing that they are speaking out on behalf of people who were not famous, but were victims too. And there's one person in particular who feels so strongly about this and significantly has the financial firepower to see this through the courts. And that is, of course, Prince Harry. I interview him as part of this documentary. It's the first time that he's spoken since his win against Mirror Group newspapers. He reveals his reaction to that ruling and he gives an insight into the impact that years of unlawful activity had on him. We'll release some of that interview tomorrow. But this story is not just about princes and prime ministers. The documentary also features people who were suddenly caught up in tragedy, but then also targeted by some tabloids. Okay, Rebecca, thanks very much.